He's here, Marty. Yeah. Certainly Max. is. So Good welcome. morning, Max. Good morning. Max. Thanks for coming in, buddy. It's yeah. important for the show. Thank you. Um, lot going on at Melbourne. There is. There's a lot going on at Melbourne. No at fun this morning, Max. No. No fun for you over <laughs> the next little while, I wouldn't have thought. Um, Joel Smith, at the end of last year, becomes an issue with a positive test of cocaine on game day. Yep. Whether or not he'd had strikes at the club, I mean, you wouldn't even know that yourself. I wouldn't have thought. No, I'm a, and I'm am a little bit better on radio than what I am in front of fifty press conferences, and hopefully mm. on the show I would be. Mm. But I still can't comment on Joel. Yeah, sure, okay, that's, uh, that's totally fine. That's an investigation. Yep. That is an investigation that is underway. It is unfortunate, and it is a game day test, which brings it into the public. Uh, so the suggestion around now is that there's a cultural issue at Melbourne. This goes back to 2021 with the uh, shock resignation of Glenn Bar- Barlett, who'd raised the flag around a couple of issues that he was concerned about, primarily the relationship between Goodwin and the playing group, Goodwin's off-field behaviour with his drinking and his betting, and then <clears throat> you go on and win the flag and everything settles down a bit. But there's obviously something been going on in that flag premiership year as a group as well. Uh, yeah, the, I I haven't read too much of the Bartlett stuff, and to be fair, I don't read much of Michael Warner's slash, slash if any of Michael Warner's stuff. Um, so I'm not really fully up to speed on Glenn v Goody and mm-hmm. Glenn v the board and Glenn v Kate Rothy and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there's a bit going on in that space. Um, if those accusations, I think it was, I think there was something about me and Goody having a beer at the pub. Mm. Um, that he wasn't a fan of. Um, I personally think that's okay to be able to have a beer with your boss. Um, you guys had beers with Marty, correct? Yeah, yeah last night. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that the one-off stuff is the issue. Yes. It feels like this might be a cumulative problem. Now for, when you look at that, it yeah. looks like that has been vindicated, is the word I saw in the paper today. Yeah. That, that seems like Well, it, it seemed sense. like he was trying, Bartlett was trying to make a point yeah. and he was getting no support from the board. And then he's resigned because he couldn't sort of be clear enough around some of the cultural issues that were worrying him. Yeah, I still strongly disagree with Glenn's views on a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. There. Okay, fine. I, I don't, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I do know you. Yeah. Um, Melbourne's board considered standing down Goodwin on the eve of the 2021 premiership. Yeah, once again, I'm not in the board meeting. Um, I'm glad they didn't because. Uh, Goody's one of the better coaches uh, in the game, has got us to top four three years in a row mm. um, defensively and contest-wise. So there's three assets of games, defence and contest. We've been the best, if not one of the best in the last three years, and that's all down to Goody. And um, he's a great friend of mine, and he won a flag in the year that they were thinking about it. I know, and I'm not trying to demonise him or make this about him, but his name keeps popping up. And you know, hasn't it, for a while, but did early days. Hasn't yeah. for a while, but the old fish rots at the head is one of the true sayings. They were so concerned about him when he was going to go to Vegas that there was a chaperone sent to keep an eye on him. That's a quote from that Herald yeah. Sun article, whether it's true or not. That's, I mean, I can, I can uh, myth buster that one now. There was uh, people did go with him, but they were going on the trip. I think it was Alan Richardson and an assistant coach Justin Platt went yeah. with Goody to the trip. Um, I think it was an easier, like a skate word to say he got chaperoned. He went with two friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Workplace bullying? Goodwood? Uh, I'm not aware of what's, what's that one. That was another thing that's been mentioned. Have you seen any of that from him within the playing group? No, no. I mean, apart from being a senior coach and being strong with me at half time one day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no. But I, you're not thinking this is... Systemic behaviour where this guy is wearing a young person down or riding someone constantly that is what we would think of as bullying. You haven't seen that with him? No. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Gillan McLaughlin then chipped in his 20 cents, and this is when it really got real. He detailed his own knowledge of Goodwin's drinking and gambling at the Sorrento Hotel and encouraged Bartlett to remove the coach and Gary Pert if required. Poor old Purdy. I mean, he was just a stepladder for years yeah. <laughs> underneath Ablett. <laughs> well, I mean, you're not, I mean, surely no one's expecting me to know anything that's happened between Gil, Purdy and, and, yeah. and But Goody. why is McLaughlin chipping his 20 cents in? Well, the, box, the head of was. the AFL. Mm. Um, <laughs> funny enough, I think he was at the pub. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, actually, I, would know. I actually yeah. can't remember, but I think he was there at the pub that day. <laughs> 
Max. Thanks Max. for coming in, buddy. How did we go? Did we break the internet on the first segment? <laughs> nah, yeah. we're all right. Yeah. Yeah. You're going beautifully, <laughs> Max. Good. I know there's a lot of stuff you can't talk about, yeah. and that's fine. It's just nice to hear from the captain of the club. Mm-hmm. When I the cl- was prepared for Joel and Clayton. I wasn't prepared for Goody, so you sort of threw me a little bit there, but I think I got them. Oh, yeah. No, fine. I think that's fine, but I think Goody has, you know, he's become an easy target because of previous behaviour. Now, whether he's, you know, cleaned a lot of that up, you yeah. would know. You're a mate of his. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure he has cleaned it up to a degree. So. Well, I don't think... I'd, my understanding is there was nothing there to clean. I think he was... Missing. Unfairly treated right. in yes. the first place. Yes. Mm. Um, 2023, Clayton Oliver suffers a seizure which requires him to be taken to Footscray Hospital. He's in the company of Joel Smith that evening. I, now, I don't know what that is. I don't, I'm not trying to read anything into that, but, you know, there are obvious things that you could think about were going on that night between the two of those blokes. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't there. Mm. Um, I got kids and it was midweek. Um, Discussed at any point in, in club land? Well, this is, this is off, this is off season mm. um, and they're great friends mm. and I'm only going off by facts. Clayton have a, had, a, had a seizure and went to Footscray Hospital that night. Mm. Um, yeah, that's all I can, that's all I know. That's, that's all I can really say. Mm. Mm. And at the time there were rumors circulating about uh, Clayton's future at the club that was kind of like the climax of that sort of uh, time of that. There's been some unreal timing in and around some of these stories and mm. that, and that probably is one those. Those two are still friends. They still talk. They still hang out, um, and they will probably forever. They're 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 lifelong friends. Mm. Um, they've been able to create a bond through footy, and um, I think every, 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 everyone can appreciate that that they're mm. friends. Um, um, that night, I just I, I don't know what went I on. I can give you that he's got that he's had a seizure, and I dare say that's all that's happened. Um, Smith tests positive to cocaine during round twenty three v Hawthorne. And that's when, of course, momentum builds around the culture and it starts that conversation again, which had settled down a bit. It starts the conversation. It starts um, the conversation. And then one thing about Melbourne is some of your old dudes love chipping in from the sideline. They don't make it easy for you. And obviously I'm talking about guys like Gary Lyon, who in his, you know, and Gary's absolutely entitled to his opinion, um, yeah, having a- been a legend of the club. But, it, it, you know, it's, it makes it hard for you guys to weather the storm when guys like Gary are chipping in, which he's fully entitled to do. Correct. And I expect him to. Mm. Um, we've got a lot of guys in, in the media, which doesn't help in the first place. We've got mm. Gary, Ruzi, um, Jared Healy, mm. uh, David Schwartz has been in there, Jordan Lewis. Ben mm. So we've got a lot of guys that are in there. Mm. Um, so we're expecting some stuff. And, and to be fair, Gary's been critical on us a lot, but he's also the first person to tip his hat and say, well, so well, uh, so well done. And I listen to these guys cause they're greats at the club. Mm. Gary was a captain. Um, so anything that he has to say, I'll jot down and try and work on these. We have issues galore at our football club day to day. We have a leisure group meeting every week mm. and we have since I've been at the club, we don't just get to leisure group and talk about no issues. There mm. is issues that happen every day. Um, there is, these are slightly, um, they're obviously acute. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's an investigation. So um, we can't talk about this incident in leadership group, but we can certainly talk about different things um, in and around some of this stuff in leadership group. So we talk about it every day. Um, and what I'm saying is what Gary has said is there may be something underlying at different times, certainly not drug culture wise. I think that is, I, I, I don't think that's there. Um, there has been so as the captain, Max, you're not seeing that. You're not hearing about that. You're not looking at young blokes thinking he's come in a bit hot today. Well, I'm not there for one, um, but two. Uh, I said this yesterday. We can only really go off the evidence, and we since I've been a footballer, we've done drug testing. Um, and in the last ten years, it's turned into hair testing as well. And hair testing is pretty thorough; covers almost the whole twelve months. Mm. Um, and uh, we get told regularly each year. Uh, that doesn't make sense regularly each year. Each year, <laughs> yeah. That if we have, if we're above the average or below the average or in and around the average, is there an issue? Is there a non-issue? And we haven't been told there's an issue for those ten years. So mm. I'm going off those facts. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a, a, a story brewing with Joel that's uh, ac- uh, uh, investigation, so I can't go off that. Mm. And in, that's the only thing I have. So mm. I have hair testing results, and I have. Uh, Acquisition, acquisition, whatever the word is, on Joel. That's right. all I have. Um, 
when you're looking at young blokes around the club and you're thinking, oh, those three blokes are spending a lot of time together, you're starting to hear a little bit of they might be having a schooner on a Tuesday night. Are you going? Are you talking to them? Are you saying, boys, pull your head in? Uh, are those conversations happening regularly if we're looking at the culture? Uh, this generation's getting more and more people getting drafted without even drinking. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's becoming less and less that. There's certainly... Um, less drinking involved in football than when I first walked into the club. So that mm. exact example you gave me happens very rarely. Yeah, mm. right. Mm. Um, then December, Clayton Oliver leaves the club's pre-season camp to take time off to focus on his mental well-being. He's become the focus of a lot of rumour and talk around not only culture but his own well-being. How's he travelling at the moment? Uh, he's going uh, better. Um, Clayton and I have been through um, a strong little 24-month period here. Mm. Um, he, he bunked in with me for a couple of weeks. Felt like a couple of years, but it was a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. um, Load the dishwasher. <laughs> yeah. And look, he's, um, I said this yesterday as well. I, I, I'm starting to turn my opinion on, on, on where I sit with Clayton. Um, as a captain, we've had a, a, a tough relationship, but um, I'm starting to get really inspired. Mm. Um, he uh, has gone through some strong mental health stuff. Um, he's been in and around some crossroads. Um, he's, he's stuffed up and he, he's owned up to a lot of those stuffing ups. Um, he's lied to me. He's told the truth. He's, he's done everything you can do in a little period. Um, but ne- you can see how hard he is working to become his best self. Mm. Mm. Um, so let's say he has two weeks of being his best self and then maybe he is late to training or something like that. And he just stuffs up a time. You can see how much that hurts. Mm. The late, the, the late to train and then how much it really breaks him. Um, and then how much he just gets straight back on and tries to be his best self. And, um, I'm hoping he can, um, beat it. Cause, uh, I personally haven't had any mental health or any real, diagnosis but um those a lot of people around me have um and Clayton is one of them at the moment I know how hard it can be to get out of it um so he's got all our support um he obviously still has to live by our culture and our standards and we'll keep him honest with that um so if there is stuff that does pop up you will probably hear about it or see it but we're hoping he um has gotten to the better side now and um for those that watched he played on Sunday um, in quarters five to seven, which is hilarious, where everyone wants the <laughs> AFL to get shorter, but they mm. said, no, nah, screw it. We'll, put, we'll have we'll, a 14-hour we'll, game. Let, let's play seven quarters. <laughs> yeah. um, so it was really good to see him with a smile on his face, um, but it's important that he keeps banking days. So um, he's now, since he's been back, I think it's like three weeks. Let's make it four weeks. Let's make it five weeks. Let's just keep banking days throughout. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a Melbourne supporter, so I want him playing footy because he's an absolute freak. Mm. Um, but I'm also a, um, a friend uh, and I just want him living healthfully and happy. Mm. Yeah. Also, Max, good on you, mate. I love that you came in. Um, I think Melbourne are very lucky to have you as their captain mm. and a mentor of these young blokes. And I know none of these issues will be revolving around you. And I know you'll be working as hard as you can to get to the bottom of them, whatever they are. And there's cultural issues in every organisation, whether you've got one dead shit or you've got a couple of guys <laughs> on the gear. I mean, it is everywhere. And so I, it's and a societal issue. It, the focus is on you at the moment. And as I say, you're a lovely man and they're very lucky to have you, Max, this yeah. young playing group. So, you know, and more have, power to you. We have 45 guys and I, I do understand it seems to be two guys that are constantly getting in the news. But I do, I do agree with people that say if there's two, there may be issues. So I am working on that to make sure that mm. there is. But what I'm seeing right now is they're very isolated mm. incidents from the work that I'm doing. So, um, I mean, it could be, I could be missing stuff, but. Well, well, it's just that we get one version. That's why it's great to get you in here. So we get that Joel Smith is texting people in the team. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? I mean, that's it. That's it. Again, we're going into the investigation is part. Is it seven blokes? Or, but do you know what I mean? That's yeah. what we think from you the outside. You can speculate and I'll exactly, just sit here. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's speculation. Yeah. Yeah. From a personal perspective, man, no captain of any club has dealt with more in the last three, five years. Does it wear you down having to front up like this? It feels almost like monthly you're kind of doing it. Uh, I was pretty flat yesterday. Um, yeah. I didn't shower this morning, but it's, it's just... You smell just, amazing. You, you look great. Yeah. I just forgot to. Lululemon, and the whole thing. It's yeah. beautiful. Um, uh, yeah, I was... Uh, after the presser yesterday, um, I've done three presses where it's been quite... Um, I'd like a lot going on. Yeah. And it just... You build yourself up to make sure you say everything right. And yeah. um, and then the moment after it, I just hit a bit of a flat spot. Um, but I, I'm, I'm fine. I've... I back in our team. I back in our culture. Um, 
I love all my teammates. Um, we're going to stuff up at times, um, and hopefully uh, we get to the pointy end of this year. And um, obviously, there's a whole lot of things that are more important than winning than just winning the flag. And um, it's what I've spoken about with Clayton. But um, I'm excited to walk in every day at the moment. I'm excited to walk in today, even with everything that's going on. I can't wait to see the guys' faces. And we lost to Richmond, so um, that'll be a thing that we'll talk about today. So it's it's good. We're back into footy. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about Carlton. We got them in six days. Um, so that'll be the focus a bit more today. And um, you think this wears people down a lot, the newspaper, but Gen Z do not read newspapers. And they don't, <laughs> no. I'm not going to lie, they're probably not listening to the show as well. They're outside the door. They're not, yeah, they're not your <laughs> father. Right. As long as their dads are listening. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters. North, North making the eight. Uh, I didn't watch yesterday, but I hear there's this thing called North Ball. North Ball. North yeah. Ball. Yeah. Get ready. That's, Get ready. <laughs> that's made its way into our, uh, our, our four walls. Yeah. Thank you, mate. Thanks for coming in.